Hi guys, welcome to another Keyshot tutorial. My name is Liam Martin and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create a worn and slightly crinkled leather material in Keyshot. Now you'll need to be using Keyshot 8 or above to achieve this as I do it and that's because we're going to be using displacement at the end of the tutorial to add crinkles onto the surface of the leather. You might be able to achieve the similar sort of effect with bump but I haven't tried it out too much myself. So if you do try that, let me know how it goes in the comment section below and tag me in your post on Instagram if you publish your renders. I'm going to jump over to my computer now to start the tutorial. I put a little bit extra effort into this one. I think it's the best so far, so I really hope you enjoy it as well. Okay, so to show off the leather effect, I'm using my scene from Render Weekly Season 2 Week 5, which is this week as of filming. Uh, we've got this chair in the scene and a nice cushion which we're going to apply the leather material too. First thing to do is go and locate the leather materials that are default in Keyshot. I'm going to start off with the leather brown 1000 millimeters and drag that on, double click it and go to the material graph. So it's a plastic material and it's got these two leather textures in there. I'm going to delete out the diffuse and I'm just going to use the bump texture. And just so we can see it a little bit better, I'm going to bring this down to a very dark brown. If you want to use black uh, to create black leather, then do that. So you can see from default, it's uh, very, very reflective and very bright. There's a light source over here, which is going to help us see uh, what's happening. First thing I notice is the bump on there. So the bump height's fine. Uh, it's quite shallow, only 0.05, but I'm going to bring down the scale to 500 for a bit of a finer grain. Next, I'm going to go over to textures in the library and search for the cast iron bump. Now this is what we're going to use to control everything else pretty much in the leather. If I drag that into the material graph, see on the keyboard, I'll show you how it uh, looks. So we've got these patches of dark, uh, darker material and patches of light. And basically I'm going to use these light patches as areas of good leather. Okay, so anything that's light is going to reflect more light. It's going to show the grain better. It's going to be a darker color. And then anything that's black is going to be less reflective and be more dulled out. Okay, so this works nice. If you find another texture, you use that and you should be able to follow these uh, instructions uh, to implement that in the same way. First thing to do is to plug this cast iron bump texture into the specular and that's going to make the leather a lot more dull. I'm going to right click on that line between and add in a color to number node so we've got more control over it. Hit C on the keyboard to preview it, and then I'm going to make some changes. So I'm going to bring down the input to first, and I'm going to bring that down to like 0 0.3, I think. Yep. And I'm going to bring down the output to. I'm going to make everything darker, and then I'm going to bring up the input from a little bit, just so these dull areas here aren't, um, aren't absorbing that much light. Hit C on the keyboard to come out the preview and you'll see what we've got. Okay, so we've got duller areas here that we're uh, the worn leather. Uh, they're not reflecting as much light. And then we've got the bright areas here that are reflecting a lot of light. I'm just going to take that down uh, a little bit more, the output too, just so they're reflecting less. There we go. Next thing to change is the bump height. So I'm going to drag that texture over here to the plus and select bump height. Again, we'll right click and add in a color to number node. Now how the bump height works is, so we've got the bump height of 0.05 coming from the leather. Anything that's white on this texture going into bump height is going to uh, show the full 0.05 or the full bump height. And then anything that's darker is going to be less. Okay, so what we want is anything uh, that's light on here, we want it to be 0.05, which means we need these areas to be white. I'm going to do that by bringing down the input to might even bring it down even further. That looks about right. And I'm going to bring up the input from, and that's going to make the darker areas uh, really dark. So there's going to be almost no bump there. And that should be fine. So if I exit the preview, go over to my camera, change to a free camera. Let's go and have a look. So it's handy that I've put this light there because it allows you to see the effect on the leather. I suggest that you do that in your own scene as well. Okay, so we've got the bump in the good areas here, and then you can see the duller patches uh, where the bump doesn't show. So that's what we want. We're saying that these areas, the bump has been completely worn away, just as it would be in real life. 
Next up is to adjust the color. So we already set the color so we can see the effect better. If you right click, go to utilities and color adjust. We're going to plug that into the diffuse. It will change the color. We double click on this and we can set our color. So I went for brown, it defaults to black. So if you want black leather, don't change it. I've got a very dark brown here. And I'm going to plug this texture into the contrast. Okay, that's going to change things for now. I'm going to right click there and put in a color to number again. And then I'm going to hit on the color adjust and hit C on the keyboard to see what we get. So with this texture plugged into the contrast, uh, it's making everything lighter, which is fine. Uh, what we want to do is revert it. Uh, sorry, not reverse it. We've got the good leather, uh, good leather here, which is a dark color, which is fine. We just need to make everything else a little bit darker. So if I bring down the input to, to about 0.1, that's making um, generally everything darker. And we've got these lighter areas, which are the more worn areas of leather. So gone to a lighter material. Uh, we just don't want them to be so light. So what I'm gonna do is bring down the output, uh, the output from, and it will make all of these darker. We only want a little bit of change in between them. We don't want a, a massive difference uh, because it will show off quite a lot. So quite subtle. But especially when light's not shining on this, you should see the effect. I'm going to hit C to come out of that. And that's done. I'm just going to hit the aligned uh, modules, aligned nodes, so it's a bit more organized. And now we can move on to creating the crinkles in there. That's the leather texture done. You could finish uh, the tutorial there. And you've got a pretty good leather material. If I go to my free camera and show you how it moves around, it's really nice when you get light bouncing off it and you get these dull areas. It looks really smart. To get the crinkles on there, go back into material. We're going to right click, go to geometry and add in the displacement module. So this won't be available if you're not running Keyshot 8 or above. And displacement allows us to extrude from uh, a source so we can essentially build on the 3D model that's been put into Keyshot. To control the displace, right click, Go to textures and we're going to use the cellular module which is inbuilt into Keyshot. Okay, if I preview this with C, you'll see how it starts off. Uh, this is really good if you've got sort of creases and things, uh, so it works good for uh, crumpled paper, uh, but it's also going to work well here. I am going to change the scale of the cellular to 100. I'll go back to the preview for now so you can see what we're doing. We've made it bigger. And I'm going to adjust these settings. So I'm going to bump up the contrast quite a lot. So we've got uh, whites uh, on top of blacks. Now, anything that's black won't be extruded, which is good. We only really want the uh, white areas to, um, to be creases. I can then go into levels and change that a little bit so we get smaller ones. And then the important one is noise. Okay, so noise will actually put more noise into it and create these waves okay so more like uh, how you get crumpled fabric or leather you want to play around with these settings until you get it um, to how you want uh, you can change the levels to put more variety into it i think something like this is pretty good okay so we've got darker areas that aren't going to be affected and anything that's white going to be affected more when you're happy with it and there will be some experimentation here so do play around with it and when you're happy with it, plug it into the displace module. In displace, we're going to change the displacement height to around five millimeters. Everything else should be fine. And then we're going to plug that into the geometry uh, on the material module. When you've done that, go back to displace and hit execute geometry node. And you should end up with creases in your leather like I've just got. Okay, so I think these creases are a little bit too much. So I'm just going to take the edge off the displacement. I'm going to go down to 3.5. It's up to you how extreme you go with the effect. I think it works a little bit better if it's more subtle. But what you get in the end is a very realistic, I think it's realistic, leather effect that makes leather a lot more interesting, even if it's on new products, because essentially no new products with leather are going to be that perfect. That is the end of the tutorial, guys. Really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, hit the like button and get subscribed if you haven't already. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments section below. 
use it and tag me in your post on Instagram at LDMartin. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.